Hey guys, Squiff the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to talk a bit more about the AZ EQ5 Pro mount that I recently got, like just a couple, a couple of days ago. And um, I've been able to actually use the mount in practice, um, observing the sun with my solar telescope. And also yesterday evening we had uh, quite a few clouds, but uh, towards the southern skies, um, so Jupiter, Saturn, and the moon were sometimes in the clear. So I used this C9.25 on top of this poor little mount to actually capture some images of Jupiter and Saturn. And it worked shockingly well. At the same time, I did something else. I did, um, I put my um, lens, uh, like very small lens, on top of this uh, uh, of this mount and guided with it to see like for around 10 minutes to see what the results would be after of course polar aligning the mount very precisely using SharpCap Pro. If you're not aware of that please uh, go and check a video about SharpCap Pro that I leaving up above. It's super convenient and this mount does not have a polar finder. But before I did all of that I actually got annoyed with the backlash I had mentioned in my original um, setup and unboxing video of the mount, uh, which was mostly in RA and to some extent in uh, declination. And so I fixed both backlash by opening up the mount a little bit. I actually fully tuned the RA um, axis control. So um, including re-greasing, uh, you know, getting to the worm and the gear and all that kind of stuff, the bearings, everything, and in the declination axis. And I also, of course, um, adjusted the worm mesh um, to, so we get no backlash. And the um, declination axis, I did the same thing. I will be posting a video momentarily about how do you adjust backlash on the AZ EQ5 Pro because I've done a video about that for my EQ6R but what about the um, EQ5 Pro, the AZ EQ5 Pro? It's a bit more involved, you actually need to remove the covers but it is not very complicated and it, it can be very rewarding. So all of my results are post-tuning. I was too annoyed to even take a baseline, I'm sorry this is poor scientific method, uh, but because it is so easy to do uh, plus, it doesn't leave any trace. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, if you did properly, at least. Because if it is, it's so easy to do that I thought, like, I think any new user of this mount who wants to use it for astrophotography with a large and heavy telescope, like my Newtonian uh, telescope, that's 8 inch, um, should be doing this. Okay, so um, what, and also, I've also bought a few things to pimp my mount up a little bit. Uh, so one of the things that I bought is um, an EQ Direct cable, uh, which I already had for the EQ6R, but that allows me to use the ASCOM driver called EQ Mod, which is, uh, well, I don't know for sure whether it's superior to the Skywatcher ASCOM driver, but I'll just say it's the one that I'm used to using. <laughs> And so I wanted to do the same and that way I can do without the hand controller whatsoever. So I can completely remove the hand controller and actually this cable takes the place of the, uh, of the hand controller. So I can just uh, plug it in here. So that's super convenient. Then I can just plug it into the PC and control with the PC using EQ mod or I think something called Green Swamp, although I have never used that before. I also bought an AC adapter for um, uh, cigar plugs so that I can power my mount well and I bought and not yet actually unpacked a carbon tripod for Skywatcher mounts that I'll be uh, putting the mount on and see how it works. But before that let's talk about my initial results. So I did actually one very quick night of ob observing um, two nights ago Jupiter very briefly through the clouds and the, the uh, wobble in RA really annoyed me. And so that's why I decided to just tune the whole thing before even getting a baseline guiding results. So I got much better, I got almost no deck backlash and only a slight wobble in RA. Now that wobble in RA seems to be something you cannot get rid of, at least for my mount. It's a small, very slight wobble and uh, it happens even if I have like my uh, worm gear smashed, like my worm smashed against the gear, I mean, not that much, but, um, and so I think it's probably like the, the actual gear is around the shaft and the diameter, the inside diameter of that gear 
and the shaft might not be exactly the same obviously so it can slide in and it might be uh, like moving left and right slightly uh, across the shaft or it could simply be the worm itself on its bearings in, is moving sideways a slight tiny bit which you know there's not much you can do about this um, so it does affect a little bit in the alt as mode uh, not so much in the equatorial mode and what were the results so guiding with a small lens on top uh, 252 millimeter. I was just like basically using uh, my um, Skywatcher um, a 50ED guide scope, and uh, I got results across 10 minutes after uh, pole alignment of 0.6 arc seconds RMS. That is shockingly good, especially for a mount of that uh, of that caliber. Uh, but you know that's not satisfying enough for me. So I put my Newtonian on. My 8-inch Newtonian, you might have seen it in my previous video towards at the very end of the video, I showed you how I can actually balance that Newtonian with just those two 3.5 kilogram uh, weights and the um, counterweight extension bar. Uh, but with that Newtonian, without wind, I got uh, 0.9 arc seconds uh, RMS, which is amazing for such a small mount. But with wind, like I have a bit right now, you might hear it in the mic, um, a bit more gusty wind, it went up to something like 1.7, 1.8 arc seconds. So this mount is really not, does not like wind at all. Uh, my uh, EQ6R is much more, um, you know, um, resistant to wind. And uh, one of the really good things that I thought about this mount, and I especially realized it when I tuned my declination axis, is that some of the heavy stuff like the motor and the worm gear and the gear itself are all on the bottom side of the RA axis, which means that they're working against the scope to balance it properly, which means you need fewer weights to balance a bigger amount of scope. And this is better than the EQ6R, and it's very similar to what Vixen does in their mounts, and I'm a big fan of Vixen mounts. So that's really a good design um, decision, as far as I'm concerned, from uh, Skywatcher. So I'm, I really like uh, that they did that. So really good first results. So you do need to tune the, the mount for good results. I do think that if you limit it to yourself to six, seven kilos payload, uh, you could use it straight out of the factory, at least for my mount without too much issue uh, for equatorial mode uh, for imaging. Uh, but you know, tuning it up is so easy that I really recommend doing it. And I'll be posting a video uh, momentarily. So make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already and click to on the bell icon to turn on the notifications so you can watch that video when it comes out about how to tune the backlash for uh, this mount um, and we'll be looking uh, at the declination axis and the RA axis basically the same thing um, so with that excellent results I'm very satisfied with the mount right now and even in alt as mode uh, it's really good uh, the problem is that the sin scan controller honestly I hate it I find it so bad. Uh, my favorite controller is Ioptron, followed by uh, Mead Autostar, followed by Celestron, and Sinscan is a distant last for Alt as Almine. It, it is terrible. So I've actually ordered a Wi Fi module uh, for this so I can control uh, from my phone with Sky Safari. And I think it will make it much easier, which means that the AZ Mount Pro from Ioptron that I have, which is an amazing mount, is probably better for on-the-go kind of observing. But I think now that I have this, I'll probably sell my AZ Mount Pro uh, because this can fill, fulfill its, uh, its purpose. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, let's say it's an interesting um, thing that is, uh, that is happening here. Um, and so all those good points, some bad points is like, especially like the SynScan controller I don't know, I, I really don't like it, uh, but otherwise, really decent mount. So now, let's try to pimp it up with the tripod. So this is a tripod from Cytron, and I don't think it's sold in the US, but it is sold in Japan, and it is sold in, um, at, in the UK as well. So you can see, I haven't really opened it yet. And we can rem remove it. Now that's, oh, that's a beefy tripod. Uh, okay, so it doesn't have um, an actual, you know, extension tray or a spreader, 
which is a bit too bad, but wow, that is heavy duty. <laughs> I like this. So right now, this tripod, um, which um, I, I just ordered a couple of days ago because I could use my Vixen carbon tripod, but it simply was not as convenient or as light as this one. And so I'm gonna sell the Vixen tripod um, and which will give me more money than, than this tripod, so that's good, and sell my AZ Mount Pro and that should basically uh, offset all of my uh, expenses. Now this tripod, you may notice, comes with a plate that is standard uh, 3 8 of an inch screw for cameras, but you can uh, change it easily if I find a way. Oh, there it is. Wow, that's neat. I like this. So this is the standard base that it comes with. But what is neat is that it comes with a second base, which is for Skywatcher mounts. So it has the um, pin knob thing here that will be towards the northern leg. And it has the, uh, the screw to actually hold onto the mount. So I'll put that in if I can. There. And now it is uh, well secured and I should be able to put my um, AZ EQ5 Pro on top. And it is like only two, 2.5 kilograms. Uh, I kind of miss not having a spreader, so I might do something uh, manually. But uh, let's put the mount on top and see how it looks like. I'm so relieved it fits like a glove. I was actually like the official list of mounts supported did not list the uh, AZ Q5. Uh, so I'm so glad that uh, it's actually included. And the bolt is perfect in the bottom. And oh man, this looks good. Yeah. Look at this. How awesome is this for a portable system? Oh man, this looks good. So yeah, that is the uh, AZ EQ5 Pro mounted on top of a carbon tripod ready for a trip. And so I could mount a small lens on this or I could mount even my Newtonian on this. So this is really um, going to be useful. Now my plans for this mount is to use it uh, for car trips in Japan, whether it's with my camera lens 200mm f2.8. Hey, you cannot overmount anything. And um, I also will try to use it with my Newtonian on the go by car. If um, I want to, I can also, I have also on order an AZ, AZ, uh, Skywatcher AZ GTI, which can be used in uh, equatorial mode. And I'll make sure to make a video on that to get the tiniest, cutest, uh, fully automated imaging setup uh, that uh, you can get. And also uh, relatively cheap using the AZ GTI. And I could be uh, having like the AZ GTI taking pictures of, of some nebula on one side. And then this with my C9.25 on top uh, for me to actually be, you know, uh, observing at the same time and this is I can already tell it's gonna be awesome so um, yeah my uh, recommendation so for this mount what do I think for now what are my first impressions of the AZ EQ5 Pro so first things first or GT whatever the name is first things first um, I only had it for two days I used it I tested the guiding um, with a very large payload. My eight inch newt uh, fully loaded is between 10 and 12 kilograms out of the 15 visual payload specification of this mount. Um, it is very sensitive to wind even after tuning. And before tuning, I would not have uh, dared put that much weight on top. But if you're going to use a refractor like 70 millimeter to 90 millimeter, maybe even 100 millimeter refractor on top of this, I think this is an a great mount 
but you have to be aware that it might come out of the factory with a bit of backlash that you can adjust and again i will make sure to post a video on that uh, one thing though i noticed is that you know um people have been complaining about the grease used by uh, skywatcher the ra axis actually cleaned all the grease and re-greased myself the grease um up to the uh, the actual gear was surprisingly light and surprisingly non-sticky. Uh, maybe it's because it's very new. I don't know what will have happened in the future. I'll see for the declination axis going forward, uh, but it was much better than I expected. And man, I am looking forward to using that in the field, like, you know, uh, wow, moving, traveling around with this mount. This is so exciting. So I am, um, yeah, I think like for the price, to get if you're looking for a small portable mount that can carry fairly large refractors and that you can really work with um, better than something really small like the AZ uh, GTI, I really recommend this. This is a, a really neat mount. And I think like the SEM 25P would work just as well. Uh, the SEM 25P uh, does require some tuning of a different nature because you can actually adjust the worm um, and gear mesh uh, each time you actually use it, which is pretty nice, but can also uh, make the break the mount <laughs> really. Um, and uh, there's other mounts in this category, uh, but you know I've only used the ZEQ25 a long time ago. The unique characteristic of this mount is being able to use it in azimuth for visual observing, and I already got some pretty decent images of Jupiter, Saturn and the sun through it. And I'll make sure at the end of this video to post those images, even though they're lucky imaging, so they don't speak for the, um, you know, the um, uh, characteristics of the mount in terms of guiding. It is really neat that I was able to, to get it on such a small, uh, cute mount. And uh, yeah, so first impressions, positive. There are a few things that are negative, like the scene scan controller. Yeah. Uh, but it's fine. It will be remedied with remedi remi remedied. Uh, it, it will be fixed with uh, a Wi-Fi module and with uh, my EQ Direct uh, cable, uh, which I uh, which I use. So, yeah, if you want to buy it, I think it's uh, it's good. I know that the earlier versions of this mount, when it was first released, had apparently bad uh, reviews or mixed reviews. Uh, but at least the one that I had, my sample was decent and easy to tune and I'm getting good results. So that's really much uh, it for this, uh, this video. I hope uh, it was helpful. If you're interested in buying this mount or in buying the iOptron AZ Mount Pro or buying any of the equipment that I, uh, that I owned, I'll be uh, putting links in the description down below. Those are affiliate links to OPT. So only if you want to support me and the price on OPT looks right to you uh, and you want to buy this uh, should you uh, use those, those links below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you are not subscribed to this channel and you like this type of content, whether it's about mounts, general astrophotography, astrophotography nights, camera specifications, uh, optimal exposure times, that kind of stuff are control software. Uh, you know, you should really subscribe, click on the notification bell. There's tons of similar videos uh, coming up. So with that, Thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.